Hello, my name's David Suchet, and I'm here not in my capacity as an actor playing Hercule Poirot or Blot on the Landscape, but I'm here as Vice President of the Litchfield and Hatherton Canals Restoration Trust. Now, the canal beside me is actually the Hatherton branch of the Staffordshire uh, and Worcester Canal. And because it acts as a feeder, you'll see that it survived in water until the present day. Come and have a look. Sadly, though, this canal is blocked, and it's blocked at the M6 motorway. It's also lost several bridges, and its route a little further on is now obliterated. The canal has been asleep for a long time, but it's now starting to wake up, and wake up to a new waterway world, which will see it become not a commercial traffic highway, as it was in the past, but a leisure asset, bringing the waterway way of life to the communities through which it will pass. And most importantly, it will link into the northern waters of the Birmingham Canal navigations, and so revitalizing those underused canals. Restoration of this canal and the disused section of the Worley and Essington Canal, we now know as the Litchfield Canal, will open up new waterway cruising rings, bringing aquatic life to urban areas and provide new sections of navigable waterway. With the canals restored, their prosperity of the past will fund the future success of the waterways of Great Britain. Join me now as we examine and explore the missing links of the Birmingham Canal navigations. The Worley and Essington Canal was built to carry the principal product of the districts of which it served. This principal product was coal. The canal was extended to make a route through to the Coventry Canal at Huddlesford Junction near Litchfield. This opened in 1797. The Worley and Essington Canal was amalgamated with the Birmingham Canal navigations in 1840, and the canal with its 30 locks and numerous basins was a vital link in the movement of coal and would remain so for many years. The rich Cannock coal fields were to yield this black gold for more than a century, and loading of boats carried on both night and day with the coal which fueled the Industrial Revolution. Lord Hatherton, chairman of the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal Company, also grasped the opportunity of tapping the coal trade, and by 1841, the Hatherton branch had been built to Churchbridge near Cannock. By the early 1860s, a link was forged with the Birmingham Canal Navigations Company, which resulted in the construction of Churchbridge locks. Thus, an entry point was made into the BCN system with ready access to the extensive coalfield trade. All was well until the coal ran out. With the routes not required and the flames of former prosperity extinguished, the canals were abandoned. The Hatherton branch makes its junction with the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal at Calf Heath. The junction area was developed by Ernie Thomas, whose father had started trading on the BCN in 1868. 
Ernie joined his father in 1910 in the business, operating from Birchills near Walsall. They operated some 400 joey boats and around 17 tugs. This fleet, principally moving coal traffic, had made Ernie a wealthy man. With great foresight, he created a landscaped setting at the junction at Carve Heath with both trip boats and hire boats, converted from some of his former commercial narrowboats. Following Ernie's death in 1973 and the subsequent business changes, the marina is now in different hands, but still a thriving centre. Today, little has changed, and we now board narrowboat Progress, skippered by Waterways campaigner Chris Coburn to explore the navigable portion of the Hatherton branch. Chris visited the branch as part of the campaign cruise of the 1998 Progress Appeal, which strove to lift the public profile of the Hatherton and Litchfield canals. As there is no winding hole above the first log, Progress enters the branch astern. Bob Williams, finance director of the LNH, savours the rare delight of being able to operate the only passable lock on the line of the canal. During 1998, narrowboat Progress was to venture all the way to Carnarvon in North Wales, promoting the plight of the Litchfield and Hatherton canals and the problems being presented by the lack of proper provision for navigable crossings for the Birmingham Northern Relief Road, which severs the routes in two places thus placing restoration of both the Hatherton and Litchfield canals in jeopardy. The bottom lock of the Calf Heath flight is a well-preserved example of a Staffs and Wuss lock. Fittings are nearly all original, and it shows to us how the other locks on this branch would have appeared. The pan between the two locks is used for moorings. The second lock, however, has been ingeniously covered into a dry dock and now marks the limit of navigation for narrowboat progress. The top gate echoes a forlorn cry for help. It has been shut for too many long years, and yet the paddle gear looks ready to use. In true progress style, Chris Coburn reverses to the absolute limit of navigation. And indeed, for how long? Above the lock, the remains of joey boats lie in silent respect for the trade which was once the lifeblood of this canal. Perhaps soon their last resting place will be disturbed. Chris now approaches the bottom lock facing in the correct direction and, as with all the crew on that day, wondering when boats will be able to pass through these locks, having come from the top end of the Birmingham Canal navigations just like the boats did, whose remains lie in the water too. Progress was now to head off for Carnarvon, a story we'll return to later in the video. Back in the air now with Lawrence Hogg in the microlight, and we're looking down on the locks at Calf Heath. The canal can be seen in water until severed by the M6 motorway. The Hatherton, or Churchbridge branch, came to be to serve the concealed coal field around Cannock. By tapping this rich source of traffic, carriers heading for destinations outside the BCN area could avoid paying tolls to the Birmingham Company. By 1841, the branch was opened and duly named after Lord Hatherton, chairman of the Staffs and Wuss Company. This is the site of Dog Lane Bridge, looking back to Calf Heath. Within yards of this, the line of the canal is blocked by the mighty M6 motorway. The canal is culverted underneath, and thrust boring through the embankment would be possible, and maybe in the near future, boating traffic will return to the former canal side Dog and Partridge pub.
the inviting waters of the Hatherton ripple brightly as we take in the view from Scrawper's End Bridge looking back to the M6. The view from the other side shows what appears to be a junction. It's in fact part of the feeder system from Gailey Reservoirs, a miniature canal which crosses the fields nearby. Scrawper's End Bridge shows clearly how mining subsidence has affected the branch, its lowered headroom being a direct result. Perhaps soon the feeder will be used for moorings. In the air, the line of the canal can be seen heading for Saradon. Saradon Mill Bridge was until recently in a decayed state. However, we gain a good impression of what it was like from this photograph. This must have been a typical scene. A commonplace, cabinless joey boat. Steerers and horse just going about a typical day's work on the canal. Today, Saradon Mill Bridge has been rebuilt and the pound here looks perfectly navigable. The Hatherton branch was built without an Act of Parliament and one landowner whose consent was required to build the canal insisted that the canal company provide a fish pond for him. They duly responded and the pond still joins the canal to this day. This is bridge number five, whose original name is not known. Today it's on the skew, but originally I'm sure it would have been of conventional construction. The pounds either side of number five demonstrate the potential this canal has. This area with its low-lying ground would surely become an ideal spot for marina development and moorings. The site of the next bridge is marked by a culvert over the years, it's had several names. Cats, Catch, or Four Crosses Bridge sank so low that removal was the only option. In recent years, towpath clearance and hedge laying have been undertaken by volunteers on the towpath between here and Wedges Mills. Today, this provides an attractive footpath. There is another lock on this section known as Meadow Lock, although due to subsidence, fall was very small. Near to Wedges Mills is an accommodation bridge and the canal bed viewed from this is somewhat overgrown but has a brook flowing down it. This water supply is maintained for the main Staffs and Wuss Canal. The bridge has been extensively restored by volunteers and credit must be given especially to Dennis Cooper for his masterful input in the reconstruction, a truly magnificent piece of restoration. Underneath the arch is the telling evidence of rope wear from thousands of lines which passed this way in those long lost days of commercial narrowboating. The bed of the canal approaches the site of Wedges Mills Bridge. Here the line is infilled, but from the air the hedgerow derives the former line. Until a few years ago, evidence could be found of the canal and Rosemary and Jovi's locks. However, recent commercial development has swept away almost all of the traces. 
just fences, slight humps in the road and hedgerows are all that is left. This view is just above the site of Walk Mill Lock, the summit lock of the branch and the top lock of the Bridgetown flight. In this area, a complex of basins brought much trade onto the canal. It was here that the mighty Hawkins Basin branched off the canal and this lift bridge spanned the entrance of the basin which covered some two acres. The Whirly Brook was also crossed on a small aqueduct. Permission was given to the Litchfield and Hatherton Canals Restoration Trust to remove some of the blue brick capping from the aqueduct which spanned the Whirly Brook on the arm into Hawkins Basin. These duly removed will be used in future lock restoration. The basin site will soon be under part of the Birmingham Northern Relief Road. Excavations on the site have revealed the edges of the basin and the timbers of the wharf edge and probably the sleepers of railway tracks which served the basin. What else lies buried here, we can only guess at. With a two-acre site being abandoned in the 1950s, Lawrence Hogg suggests there could well be buried boats. Sadly, we're unlikely to find out. The Gloucesters, the Elements, and all kinds of boats loaded here and did so until 1949 when the traffic ceased following mine closures. This mining tub set on a small traffic island is all that remains to remind the passerby of the vigorous and extensive mining which once was the staple industry of this area. The route of the branch now heads to Churchbridge, where it passes under the arch of the former South Staffordshire Railway. Just to the right, a small railway interchange basin was built in 1860. During clearance of the site for the Birmingham Northern Relief Road, the original edging of the canal and basin entrance became visible. The Hatherton branch terminated here at Churchbridge until 1860 when a connecting flight of locks built under joint agreement of both the Staffs and Wuss and BCN companies came into use. During the expansion of the BCN system, it was decided to extend the 473-foot Wolverhampton level to Cannock. This meant that it passes near to the end of the Hatherton branch at Churchbridge, although it was some 90 feet above it. In 1854, talks began between the two companies, resulting in the construction of the 13 Churchbridge locks, which came into use in 1860. The flight was built in a very similar manner to the Delft flight on the BCN, and they were some of the last narrow locks to be built. They rose majestically up the hillside in a dead straight line, passing under the A5 Watling Street and joining the Cannock Extension Canal at Rumour Hill Junction. For many years, they were intensely busy with constant traffic, mostly horse-drawn, and in the main carrying coal. Other traffic used the route, particularly when Wolverhampton locks were closed, as Churchbridge provided an alternative northern route. The canals and the Churchbridge flight fought a constant battle against subsidence, and maintenance was costly. As colliery output fell and traffic declined, there came a day when the toll clerk no longer watched for boats, but instead saw the stop planks inserted at the top lock permanently in 1963. The once active Cannock Extension Canal and Churchbridge locks fell silent. The water was drained and the canal and locks officially abandoned. Their fate was sealed. Dereliction rapidly consumed the site, and the intention of the National Coal Board to open cast mine the area ensured that all the traces of the flight would soon be gone, and only the memory of this once active transport system would remain. Today, only a small part of one pound can be traced, and the site of the locks and Rumour Hill Junction are lost under retail developments which in themselves have altered land levels. Churchbridge Locks have now become part of history.
During the mid-1800s, the Birmingham Canal Navigations Company made serious extensions to its system at a time when many other canals were being converted to railways. One of the major projects was the Cannock Extension Canal, built to tap the collieries around Cannock and Headnesford. With the connection to the Staffs and Wuss Canal through Churchbridge Locks, it became a very profitable extension for the BCM. This is Hednesford Basin in the late 1950s, when traffic had started to decline. The boats are all BCN Joey boats, and mixed in are some Hampton boats, built up to 80 foot long and 8 foot wide, to just work the 473 foot Wolverhampton level. Twenty-five years later, this is the view looking towards Hednesford Basin. Without the commercial colliery traffic, the canal offered no reason for retention. Subsidence was a costly enemy, and even today, evidence is still visible of retaining walls built to combat the problem. All along its length were laybys and wharves, each serving its own colliery or works and today it's difficult to imagine that there was once an active commercial water highway passing through. The line has been levelled and infilled, but the odd reminder can still be found. Conduit Colliery was one of the last basins to be active on the section at Norton Keynes. Its basin was a paragon of early industrial efficiency with every effort made to speed up loading and get the boats away. After closure of the colliery, then the canal, the basin was infilled and the boats that served Conduit Colliery were buried in the basin. They're still there today under this factory estate. The Birmingham Northern Relief Road will pass directly through the bed of the canal at Norton Keynes. Clearance of the site exposed the mortal remains of this once commercial highway. Maybe the ghosts of canal horses will still cross the BNRR, hauling along a towpath that will only be a memory. The Canuck extension south of the A5 is still in use, and several boatyards occupy the final stretch. Commercial activity did not cease here, and probably would have survived on the rest of the canal if only the authorities would have had a little foresight. <laughs>